Hi, John Hess from FilmmakerIQ.com. Let's say you just finished your short film. It's brilliant. But now what? Today, I'm going to explain some of the tips and tricks that I wish I knew when preparing to enter my short films into festival. In the interest of full disclosure, my experience thus far in my career with festivals has been with short films. So I'm focusing only on shorts in this video. Now I've made two 20 minute long shorts that have played at seven festivals. I made these before I began creating Filmmaker IQ courses. So they're not my most recent nor my most educated work. Although it's been a few years, I believe the advice I'm gonna give in this course is still relevant especially for the first time submitter. Furthermore, what I'm going to say is based on generalities. Your film may be that one in 100,000 short films that completely blows everyone away and totally negates my advice. If that's the case, congratulations. But what's more likely is you've made what you think is a very good film. And what I'm about to cover is designed to try to save you money while at the same time maximizing your festival experience. Now I'm going to begin by talking about the elements of the short itself. The first question everyone asks is about the length. The Academy of Motion Picture Arts and Sciences defines a short as less than 40 minutes, whereas Sundance Film Festival sets it at 50 minutes. If you poll an online forum, you will get people chiming in with all sorts of hard and fast rules for time ranges from no more than five minutes to five to seven minutes. Well, that's, that's all nonsense. The fact is there is no hard, fast rule for precisely how long a short can be or needs to be. A short just needs to tell a story, however long that takes. There are seven minute short films that feel longer than a 20 minute short film. And there are 20 minute short films that drag on and feel like feature lengths. The primary determinant for how long a short should be is the story. Now with that said, you will probably not find much luck trying to get a 40 minute short film into film festivals. Festivals generally schedule short films into blocks of 80 to 90 minutes each. In the festival that I was in, the blocks would contain a mix of very short shorts and a longer form short. So a short block might be three two minute shorts, three 10 minute shorts, and then two 20 minute shorts. So if you walk into a festival with a 10 minute short, programmers will have an easier time scheduling that than a 20 to 30 minute short. If you walk in with a 40 minute short, well, that leaves a lot less time for other films in that block. If your film is straddling that line between short and feature length, honestly, your best bet is to rework the script and tell a smaller story to get it down to a shorter length or tell a bigger story and actually make a legitimate feature film. Now, next is the content. No one wants to be censored, but you will have a lot harder time getting a short that has a lot of violence, nudity, and language into festival because of the fact that you are sharing your time slot with other short films. Now, it would be less of a concern if you were submitting a feature film. I would say you could probably get away with what would be considered a PG-13 or a light R rating, but really not much more than that. And here I'm primarily talking about mainstream film festivals. There are specialty film festivals that will have their own standards and we'll discuss that in the next section. In a perfect world, you could enter your film in all the festivals and then just see which of them picks your film. But every entry comes with a fee, and at $50 to $75 a pop for some festivals, that's gonna be adding up really fast. Now, before you start entering film festivals, it's actually a great idea to attend a few different film festivals. Now, this is advice that is not usually heated. I mean, I never attended festivals out myself outside of screenings for my friends here and there. But festivals can be a lot more than just film screenings. They'll often have social functions, workshops, parties, and meet and greets. 
even if you don't have a film in a program, a festival can be a great way to network with other filmmakers. Even consider volunteering to help at a festival. This is a great way to get your foot in the door and build personal relationships with the festival directors and programmers. Now, some of you might be grumbling that how that's unethical. I'm not saying it's flat out favoritism. They probably won't screen your film as a favor if it's totally crap. But if you made a great film and it's a choice between you and an equally good film from a stranger from the other side of the country, well, you might just get the edge in the final selection. So that brings me back to the first bit of advice when picking film festivals. Favor local film festivals over far distant ones. You have a better shot at a small local film festival that's a 20 minute drive away than you do at a small local film festival that requires you to hop on a commercial jet. There are two reasons for this. The first is some film festivals have relations with their local film boards or film promotion agencies. Because of this and a healthy dose of local pride, they tend to like to showcase local talent. Now, secondly, by showcasing local talent, they have a better opportunity to sell tickets to cast and crew who are gonna be able to make the screening as well as their friends and family, which will help you stack your audience. In case you're wondering though, most film festivals do not share the proceeds of the ticket prices with the filmmaker. That's not because they're greedy, as ticket proceeds usually only make up a small portion of a festival's revenues. Most festivals just break even, with the remainder of the money coming from sponsorships and grants. Now, another reason why you should aim for local festivals is, should you be selected, you should make every effort to attend the festival in full. So don't enter festivals that you have no interest or financial means to travel to. Now, you may have heard that some festivals will pay filmmakers to fly out. Well, that doesn't happen, unless you're famous or you're, and certainly not with short films. If you don't attend a festival you got selected for, all you'll get out of the whole experience is the right to put laurel leaves on your DVD cover and frankly, no one really cares about that kind of thing. The second consideration when picking which film festival to submit to is the type of content. Now there are lots of specialty film festivals, festivals dedicated to genres like horror or forums like shorts or documentary or special interests like LGBT films or cultural films like Asian American films. If your film can fill that niche, well, you have a very good chance of getting in. Now lastly, we come to prestige. Film festivals range from the top highly publicized fests like Sundance, Cannes, Venice, Toronto, South by Southwest, and AFI, all the way down to, well, honestly, a small black box theater in a shopping mall with a rented projector. In regards to the former, I would recommend entering at least one of the big festivals, but don't spend all your money there. The odds are stacked heavily against you. Sundance gets 13,000 movie submissions a year. 8,000 of those are shorts. Unless you have A-list talent, which many of those films will have, your chances are very slim. Not non-existent, just slim. Take a shot. Just don't focus mainly on these super prestigious festival. On the flip side, I generally avoid the lowest tier festival if some of them can really be called that. I wouldn't be surprised if some of them turned out to be scams trying to collect submission fees. Now, as a rule, when I was submitting to festival, I would avoid any festival that was in its first year. Not that they aren't well-meaning, but it may take a few years for a festival to really get its legs. That might be unfair, but you should do your research into any festival and make sure it seems like a legitimate event. Submitting to film festivals is both a pain in the wrist in regards to filling out form after form and a pain in the wallet as you dish out submission fee after submission fee. To help with the former, there are now several film festival submission platforms that help aggregate a list of festivals and allow you to copy relevant entry information from one festival to another. When I was in the process of submitting, there were really only was one platform without a box. Now owned by Amazon, Without a Box had one really nice feature that I liked. If you submitted to an IMDB eligible festival, your submission would be automatically added to your IMDB page. 
Now, since then, other platforms have sprung up like filmfreeway.com. Now, these services can also help you determine which film festivals you should consider entering. To help with the pain that your wallet is going to feel, try to apply to festivals as early as you can. Early bird festival entry fees are much lower than late deadline entry fees. Avoid the late entries unless you have a very strong feeling that the festival and you are a good match. Another strategy to deal with the submission fees is to reach out to the film festival and ask for a fee waiver. And this is usually granted based on a filmmaker's previous work, but sometimes festivals will grant waivers based on hardship. Now, for the actual submission themselves, every festival will have different requirements. When I was submitting, most of my submissions were still in the form of DVD, but I imagine online screeners have started to take off. Now, there has been some controversy where filmmakers will track the view statistics on the screeners, claiming that the festivals never looked at the film or only watched a portion of the film. Now, on one hand, if you did pay the submission fee, your film should be at least viewed. But on the other hand, viewing platforms could possibly misreport viewing statistics. And in some cases, a screener may not need to watch the entire film to realize that it's not a good fit for the festival. Although I think screeners absolutely should have to at least give every movie a chance, I don't automatically assign nefarious motives if they don't watch a film to completion. Resist the urge to call out the film festival if ultimately you don't get accepted. You don't know the full story and the last thing you wanna do is get a bad reputation for yourself before you get started in the industry. The fact of the matter is, most films really only make it into a handful of festivals. My best film got me into four of 14 festivals I submitted to. Two of those I had already been an alumni having a short play there the year before. Rejection is difficult to take, but it's par for the course. Uh, some festivals will offer feedback. I personally have never entered one where that was an option, but it can be something worth getting. Enough of this dour talk. What happens when you actually get accepted into a film festival? Well, the first thing to get in order is your screening copy. In your acceptance message, you will get instructions for how to deliver the final cut of your film for your screening. Follow these instructions to the T. This is after all why you submitted in the first place. Also make sure that everything on your film is locked. At a screening of mine, I discovered that I had submitted a version of the film without music. Luckily, it was my hometown festival, so I was able to replace the screener for my second screening of the film. Now, once you have your screener figured out, take a look at any of the press materials that they suggest. This will include posters and other movie paper you'll want to include. I'll talk more about that in a bit. Now, after you've got your submission squared away, you have to decide whether or not you're going to attend the festival. Now, it should be pretty obvious by now, if you get accepted to a film festival, you should absolutely attend. It's kind of a no-brainer. However, there are costs involved. There's travel and accommodations, unless of course you're in your own hometown local festival. But if you're traveling to a festival with a short film, you're probably not gonna have your travel arrangements comped. Regardless, make sure to inquire as far as group rates on hotels. Generally, it's a good idea to stay at the official hotel of the festival, as the hotel is likely where many of the events will also be held. The less traveling about, the better. As for your stay, make sure you are at the festival for the key events. If you're going to a festival just to attend your own screening, you're wasting valuable opportunity to network, learn, and yes, even party. So when it comes time to booking your trip, Plan it so you make the opening night, the panel sessions, networking events, and closing ceremonies. Trust me, it's these things that make the film festival worth all that trouble. Now, let's talk about the actual screening itself. The first hard, fast rule about film festivals, festivals do not market your film for you. That is your job. I'll regale you with a story of my first festival experience. I didn't know a thing. My screening was at 10.30 p.m. Being a natural introvert, I, 
I didn't invite anyone from the film to the festival. I had dinner by myself and then showed up to the festival about 90 minutes early. The film playing in the theater before mine had a huge audience, standing room only for an Italian mafia comedy where one of the supporting actors from The Sopranos played a bit role. What a great opening for my film, I thought. The film itself was really good, really funny for the first act. And then it went downhill and oh my, it, it was, it got so bad. It, by the end, I just wanted the film to be over with. And when their credits finally began to roll, I ran to the bathroom as the sake had a dinner had finished its journey through my system. I got back to the theater 10 minutes before my screening and not a single person was left in the room. Completely empty. Not one. My film began and I was the only person there. What did that crappy Italian mafia movie do right that I didn't? They marketed their film heavily. They went on local radio to talk about their film. Half the cast was there, though not the guy from The Sopranos. They had posters all over and an after party for the screening. And me? Well, I was so nervous about my deeply personal film that I didn't invite anyone. And here I was watching a copy of my own film about loneliness alone. I walked back to my hotel that night and vowed to never let that happen again. If you don't champion your own film at your festival, no one will. It begins by hustling at every opportunity. What most filmmakers do is create postcards for the movies. Postcards are nice in that they're inexpensive to get made up and act like mini movie posters that you can put in your pocket. Now, since you won't know the screening time, most likely till the very last minute, I like to leave a little blank space on the postcard where you can write in the screening time with a Sharpie. Have plenty of these postcards on hand. Give them to everybody you meet, as well as the festival organizers who can put them in the goodie bags that everyone gets. Now, you don't have to just limit yourself to postcards. The sky's the limit in how you want to hustle to get people to your film. But it's not all about pure advertising dollars. Go to the networking events, make friends with other filmmakers, agree to see their films, invite them to yours. It should go without saying, invite your cast and crew and their friends. The more people you have that are with you on set, the more evangelists you have on hand to help get butts in the seats. And then ultimately, the one bit of advice I wanna give you when attending film festivals with your short film is this, relax. I'm gonna break the real hard truth here. You are not going to sell your short film at a festival for a million bucks. You are not going to meet that hotshot producer who's there scouting for talent, who's instantly going to sign you for a studio contract based on your tremendous filmmaking talent. You are going to wake up the next morning, maybe a little hungover, but the exact same person that went to bed the night before. A festival is not a magic ticket. It is, however, a celebration of the work that you and other filmmakers like you have accomplished. Being able to turn a million variables into a cohesive motion picture. It's a chance for you to connect with other filmmakers and perhaps to reconnect with your cast and the crew. It is a celebration of what makes us most human our love for story. So go out there, make something festival ready, make something great. Follow us on Facebook and Twitter. Consider becoming a patron on Patreon for exclusive behind the scenes content and more. I'm John Hess, and I'll see you at filmmakeriq.com.